Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hello, my little friend. Just a quick minute before your meditation story comes on. Did you know that you could be in the real cat club or in a Tucker and Leo club? If you want to hear exclusive stories that no one else gets to hear, that might have your name in, go to the patron link just below this video and sign up. Namaste, my little friend. Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Lie down in your bed and get really comfortable. Try not to move around so much so you can let your body fully slow down and relax. Close your eyes if it feels right for you so that you can see the story play out in your mind. Hopefully and eventually, you'll fall to sleep. It had been a really long day. Stephanie was tired. She was sat at her dressing table thinking about going to Moonbow Forest. She was also thinking about just jumping into bed and forgetting the whole thing. She got on her comfortable pajamas. She was brushing her wet hair from the shower. And by the time she finished getting all the lugs out of her hair, she decided she would go for a visit. She opened a jewelry box and pulled out her special magical earrings. Held them in her left hand for a moment and just ran her index finger over them to feel them and think about how much they meant to her. She put the left one in first and then the right one. Took a big deep breath, closed her eyes and started to let the magic happen. On this particular occasion, she felt a very strong tingling sensation in her tummy. A sensation that ran up her spine really fast. She kept shivering as it felt like someone was tickling her feet. The sensations and the connection to the other side were really strong today. She could feel it. Her nose started to do its familiar itch and twitch and she wanted to sneeze at one point. And then, in her mind's eye, her third eye, she saw the veil there in front of her face. It sparkled and shimmered, just like it always did. Stephanie could sense Moonbow Forest waiting for her there on the other side. She started to get that familiar butterfly sensation in her tummy, the excitement of seeing her friends, possibly visiting new places there and finding new yummy things to eat. She pulled the curtain back and stepped into the other side. 
the other world, the place that she knew as Moombo Forest. She felt the grass underneath her feet, soft and prickly at the same time, spongy as if she was stood on a really plush carpet. She smiled internally and felt like she was home. This place had become so special to her. She opened her eyes and noticed it was nighttime there. It was very, very quiet in the forest. No Luna, no other unicorn friends. No one was around. She could hear the birds and different noises that you hear at night. Crickets making noises. The moon was big and full and bright in the sky. And the quiet, calm, stillness all around her felt really, really nice. There was a coolness in the air and a soft breeze that was blowing through the trees and it felt like the trees were talking to her. The trees all around her had a very special place in her heart. They were one of the first things that she ever tasted when she first discovered Moombo Forest all that time ago. She walked up to the closest tree next to her, reached out her hand and touched the bark of the tree. She pulled a piece off and brought it up to her nose and smelt it. It smelt like hazelnut flavored chocolate. She put a piece in her mouth, closed her eyes and smiled. It was just as good as the very first time she tasted it. And then she reached up and grabbed one of the leaves and it tasted like peppermint chocolate. Another one of the leaves tasted like lime flavored chocolate. The tree seemed to be talking to her. It didn't say anything out loud. She felt the tree rather than hear the tree. She felt it in her stomach, really strong. That feeling, that buzzing, tingling sensation that she felt when she put the earrings on was getting stronger and stronger and it didn't normally feel like this. It was different. She was wondering why her stomach felt so strange. It was almost as if her stomach was becoming something that was very, very alive. Communicating to her, talking to her, telling her, go inside the tree. She questioned her in a voice. There wasn't any doors or archways or anything obvious in this tree. But it kept feeling so intense. The vibrations in her abdomen were so strong. Like the voice inside of her was getting louder. Go inside of the tree. Trust me. It made her think of this book that she read one time where it was talking about your intuition. Your intuition is your inner knowing, a voice inside of you that might sound like your own voice, it might sound like another person's voice, but it's a voice inside of you that talks to you that says, do it, don't do that, don't go that way. Listen to them, they're a good person. Don't go with that person, they're not so good. 
that internal voice that all of us have. It made her think of that book because the voice was so loud inside of her head. Go inside of the tree. Stephanie instinctively put both hands on the bark of the tree and the bark of the tree seemed to change. It didn't feel so solid. It felt as if it was crumbling underneath her fingers, turning into dust or something that was minute, transparent, particles that she could actually walk through, particles that she felt like she knew she could walk through. Like walking through a wall. She stepped forward and stepped into the tree. And as she did so, her whole surroundings completely changed. She wasn't inside of this tree that she just stepped into. She found herself inside of a cave with an opening above her head. So all she could see through the opening was the sky and the full moon there above her. The light from the moon shone down into the cave and brightened everything inside of it so it didn't appear to be dark and scary at all. It looked like a big, wide open space. As she looked down on the ground, she noticed a pool of water. It was about the size of a jacuzzi. And the moonlight was shining on the reflection of the surface. The water was as still as could be. And it looked like she had a moon above and below. Right there in front of her. Again, her stomach so intense. Her inner voice kept saying it over and over. Step into the moon. Step into the moon. Stephanie decided to trust. She took a big step down into the pool of water there in front of her. She felt like she was stepping into the moon. Both of her feet disappearing into whatever it was down below. The water was cool. Not cold. Just perfectly cool. What was the most interesting about this whole experience was it didn't feel like normal water. The moon water that she stepped into felt soft. It was so hard to explain. It didn't feel like normal water. Like when you step into the bathtub or into the ocean. The water around her feet felt soft, as if it was welcoming her into it, becoming part of it, not separate from it. It felt like her feet and her ankles and her lower legs were all being absorbed into this water. And the water was being absorbed into her legs, like they were melding and mixing and becoming one with each other. She quickly knelt down 
then sat down, then laid back and floated in the reflection of the moon in the middle of the pool. And her whole body had the most amazing experience. It felt as if her entire body was tingling vibrating stronger than anything that she'd ever ever felt she wasn't scared at all she knew she was safe whatever this experience was her gut her voice inside of her abdomen her intuition was telling her it was okay she needed to have this experience And then, what happened next? She would find hard to explain forever and a day. She felt like she lost her body. Her body disappeared. Her legs, her arms, her head. She expanded beyond her body. She became part of the water, part of the cave, part of the sky. She became the moon. She became the air in the sky. She became the breeze. She became the earth on the ground. She became the chocolate trees the strawberry rivers, all of the yummy things that she'd ever tasted there at Moonbone Forest. She became Pizza Mountain. She became the flowers that she'd eaten. She became everything. All of the flavors, the textures, the sensations, the vibrations, atoms, the cells, the particles, the hairs, Every single thing about Moombo Forest was inside of her body that she no longer had. It was like a little piece of Stephanie was inside of everything, and everything there in Moombo Forest was inside of her. She became one with it all. She felt like the moon up there in the sky, a part of every single thing down below and above it. She felt like the cosmos. She felt like all of the universe, every planet, every star, every solar system. Stephanie was all of it. She was every single flavor she could think of. She felt like lemon. Her mind would think of lemon and her whole body became the flavor. She felt the flavor of what lemon tasted like. It was so bizarre. She felt chocolate, she felt strawberry, she felt coconut, she felt key lime pie. She felt like the flavors taste. She felt them. She didn't taste them or smell them. She felt as if she was that flavor. She felt like every single color. She felt like blue and violet and gold and pink and purple and orange and red and yellow and all the different tones of each individual color. She felt like all of it. Stephanie was everything in this pool of water. The special magical place that her intuition had guided her to inside of the chocolate tree. She felt like she could feel and think what the moon feels and thinks. She felt like Pluto, Uranus. She felt like all of the stars.
and all of it mixed together felt like the most calm, loving sensation she had ever experienced. She wasn't happy, she wasn't sad, she wasn't joyous, she wasn't crying, she wasn't upset or angry, she wasn't excited or jealous. None of those sensations existed inside of her body right now. She just felt peace. She felt complete. Like she didn't want for anything. She didn't need anything. She was everything. If crystals could be fluid like water, Stephanie would say that that's what this pool of water felt like, like she was swimming in crystals. She floated on her back for the longest time. Time wasn't even time. It didn't exist in this place. She didn't feel like she'd been there a long time or that she'd been there two minutes. She didn't feel any of that. Time, years, days, minutes. None of it felt as if it existed. Like time just stopped. Stephanie felt like she didn't exist. And yet, at the same time, she felt like she existed in all that was. All that is. She was in everything. It was the most unusual, bizarre experience that she had ever, ever had. Stephanie found herself laying back in her bed at home, staring at the fan on her ceiling, going round and round and round. She scratched her nose and felt like she was in her body. She felt her nose with her fingertip. She wiggled her fingers and felt like she was back. She wiggled her toes and moved on her bed and felt her entire body back in place. Her knees where her knees were, her elbows where her elbows were. Everything was back where it used to be. Her bedroom felt like it always did. She took a big deep breath in and it smelled like it always did. She could hear noises in the house like she always heard. Life was back. She was back in this world. She wasn't in Moombo Forest anymore. Stephanie had no clue why she had the experience that she had. How it was that she got to experience oneness the way that she did. She knew what she experienced. She wasn't confused about that. Stephanie put her left hand on her abdomen and closed her eyes. Intuitively, she said thank you out loud. Thanking her own intuition that tingling sensation inside of her tummy, her abdomen talking to her, telling her what to do, what's okay and what's not okay. That intuition that she'd had that she'd not really paid attention to before, that inner voice inside of all of us that guides us in the right direction. Stephanie realized from that day forward she would never ignore 
the inner voice. She would never again ignore her intuition. And if that's all that she needed to get from this trip to Moonbow Forest, then she definitely got it. She understood how important it was. She didn't get to taste all of fun, normal, usual things or experience something cool. Not in the normal sense of Moonbow Forest, that is. But this time, it was the most cool experience that she'd ever, ever had. It showed her how big she really was. How she was a part of everything that is. How we are all a part of everything that is. So much bigger than our bodies, our faces, our names. We are actually a part of all that is. The end.